Okay, so now I want to do a comparison contrast between the anatomical route from the, the somatic nervous system to the effector and the anatomical route from the um, autonomic nervous system to the effector. So remember, we drew this back here, and basically it was super simple. It was always acetylcholine here. The effector was always skeletal muscle. The effect was always excitation in the somatic nervous system, not everywhere. So now what I want to do is I want to talk about this one. So what's the anatomical route that you are going to go from the central nervous system to, for instance, cardiac muscle? And that's what that picture is supposed to be. So basically what you are going to have shown in this figure, and then we'll draw it in here in just a second, is there is a two neuron chain before you get to the effector with a ganglion in the middle. So this ganglion is, mm, you saw in anatomy probably, these were the sympathetic chain ganglia. That's, for instance, that's not the only place that they can be. But, so there is an, a ganglion. And a ganglion, remember, is when you ever, whenever you have neuron cell bodies collected outside of the central nervous system, they make a little blob, and the blob is called a ganglion. So, um, here's a, a ganglion, just a rec it's not what they look like, but it's a representation. So um, there's two neurons with a ganglion in between. And since you know enough anatomy and enough physiology to tell which direction the information flow is here, which is from this side to this side, because dendrites receive and axons send, dendrites receive, axons send, then you can actually tell which direction information is flowing through this whole diagram which is from here to here, from the CNS through the PNS to the effector organs. That means that with that in mind, we can call this the preganglionic neuron, because that one's first before the ganglion, and then the postganglionic neuron. Good? There are going to be two synapses. The first synapse is in the ganglion. The CNS neuron that we had, also the preganglionic neuron, has its cell body in the gray matter of the central nervous system. The axon goes through the peripheral nervous system to synapse with this second neuron. And that second neuron is called the postganglionic neuron because it starts in the ganglion and then goes after. And then the second synapse um, is where the postganglionic neuron synapses with the effector. Okay. And the effector could be cardiac muscle, smooth muscle glands, even some adipose tissue, but I don't usually teach that one. Okay. So now what I want to do in this figure is I want to draw in the, the necessary stuff. So let's do that. Okay. Um, the neurotransmitters that are released at autonomic neurons, and that's also right here. Um, so um, the preganglionic neurons of both the autonomic nervous system um, divisions, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic, are going to release acetylcholine. And then it's going to bind right here. It's always going to be excitatory to this neuron. That doesn't mean it's excitatory there. And then um, the mechanism of excitation is going to be what you would think it is. The mechanism of excitation is that acetylcholine is going to bind to sodium channels to open them and cause what polarization? Depolarization. And this synapse, since it uses acetylcholine, is called cholinergic again. Okay, so we had cholinergic before. Now, what happens with the postganglionic neurons, I'll go back and draw this in just a second, is that in order to cause two different things to happen on the same tissue, remember we had dual innervation, what we are going to have to do is to release two different neurotransmitters. So that's what this figure will go through. So let's draw the simple portion first, and then we'll come back and add in some detail. So this figure right here is just the whole autonomic nervous system. It's oversimplified. Okay, so let's do this. Okay, so let's add in what we just said. We said, okay, we got this, that the first neuron, let's label it. This is the preganglionic neuron. Okay, its neuron cell body is in the CNS. Its axon runs through the PNS. The direction of information flow is that way. And then what neurotransmitter is released right here? It is acetylcholine, okay? 
and acetylcholine is excitatory, meaning that I am going to keep the message going that direction. So it's excitatory to this neuron. That second neuron is called the postganglionic neuron. And then what the postganglionic neuron is going to do is it is going to go to the effector. But the neurotransmitter that is released and the effect are going to be different for the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system. So this figure that you're looking at is the whole autonomic nervous system. So what I would have to do to figure out what's going to happen at the end is to separate it into the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system, which is what the figure that is um, in your notes is going to do. So that's what we're going to go back and do. Okay, so let's go here. The postganglionic neurons. What are those postganglionic neurons going to do? So the postganglionic neurons in the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system will have to release two different neurotransmitters in, uh, in order to cause two different responses on the same tissue. So what we are going to do is we're going to build this now. It's basically just putting the two figures that you just did together, okay? and you have to label every one of those missing little blanks. So I will do this with you and you will actually fill it in for yourself as well. Okay, so this is coming back and reviewing all the stuff that we just said. Okay, so this whole figure, the whole thing, is um, the efferent nervous system. So the whole blasted figure, whole thing, is the efferent nervous system. Okay, now um, let's do the simple part first. Um, what branch of the efferent nervous system right here do you call the branch of the efferent nervous system that stimulates skeletal muscle? Which division of the efferent nervous system stimulates skeletal muscle? Stimulates skeletal muscle? That's the somatic, often abbreviated SNS, the somatic nervous system. Okay, so now we have to fill this part in. What neurotransmitter does the somatic nervous system always, always release? It is acetylcholine. And what is the effect of acetylcholine on skeletal muscle? Excitation. Let's make plus excitation and minus inhibition. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to continue that comparison. So which branch of the efferent nervous system right here is composed of the parasympathetic and the sympathetic nervous system and stimulates cardiac muscle, smooth muscle, and glands? So that is the autonomic. Okay, autonomic nervous system. And the autonomic nervous system is composed of the parasympathetic here and then the sympathetic here. It's not easy to write without flipping the iPad. Okay, um, then um, let's talk about what happens here. So now um, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic are separated so that I can have dual innervation, one innervation to, for instance, cardiac muscle, two innervations to cardiac muscle going to the same tissue, okay? So let's talk about what they release from their preganglionic um, axons, neurons, and what they release from their postganglionic axons or neurons. So notice that it's already filled in for you a couple of places. This is acetylcholine. This is acetylcholine. Also, this is acetylcholine. So I want to show you a pattern here real quick. So what I'm seeing here is that acetylcholine in the entire efferent nervous system is always released first, okay? Always released first. And when it's released the first time, it is always excitatory, meaning that it excited here. It also is excitatory here because the message keeps going. And here, and here. Okay, we'll talk about this special one in just a second. That one's a little weird. Okay, and then um, what happens second 
is that um, in order to cause, again, two different actions on the same organ, what you're going to have to do is the sympathetic nervous system is going to have to release a different neurotransmitter than the parasympathetic nervous system. And that's what is going to go right here and right here. Okay. So the sympathetic nervous system is going to release primarily a neurotransmitter called norepinephrine, also a little bit of epinephrine. And the parasympathetic nervous system is going to release acetylcholine, acetylcholine again. That means that um, if the heart encountered norepinephrine, it would be because of sympathetic activity. And if the heart encountered acetylcholine, it would be because of parasympathetic activity. And then what do norepinephrine and acetylcholine do for the target organs? This is where you have to go back to that concept of um, resource allocation. So again, if I were talking about the heart, the fight or flight response would be excitatory or stimulatory. But if I was talking about the uterus, the same neurotransmitter, norepinephrine, would be inhibitory. So it really depends more on the receptors than it does on the neurotransmitter itself. Okay, so let's clean this up. Okay, and make it nice. So the whole thing we said, let's see if I can turn this, was, oops, it won't let me turn it. Okay, the whole thing we said was the efferent nervous system. And um, this was the somatic. This was the autonomic, I'm not going to um, spell it all out. This is the parasympathetic, this is the sympathetic, okay. And then what did we say? The neurotransmitter that is released here is acetylcholine, and here is acetylcholine, and here is acetylcholine, and here is acetylcholine. It's excitatory here, it's also excitatory here, here, and here. And then we said that these two have to release two different neurotransmitters and that this one was norepinephrine released, for instance, at the heart or epinephrine. And this was acetylcholine again. Okay, so with that in mind, let's go back and make sure that we can fill in these. So the postganglionic neurons and the parasympathetic nervous system I'm reading right here. Post-ganglionic uh, neurons in the parasympathetic nervous system release acetylcholine again, which binds to receptors. That's what we're talking about right here. Okay, hold on, let me see if I can find it where we were. Okay, acetylcholine again right here. And those are going to be cholinergic, cholinergic synapses. Okay, the postganglionic neurons in the sympathetic division release again, norepinephrine or epinephrine, and those um, synapses are a new word, which I haven't taught you yet, which is adrenergic. I'll explain that to you why uh, later. Um, and then um, the effects of this one or this one can be either excitatory or inhibitory because it depends most on the receptors that they bind to, okay? All right, so one little exception to the rule of um, two neuron chain is this. Let's go back here for just a second. The exception to the two neuron chain rule um, brings us back to our talk about stress physiology because in addition to the sympathetic nervous system stimulating cardiac muscle, smooth muscle, and glands, it specifically targets the adrenal medulla because remember the adrenal medulla, it can actually dump um, epinephrine into the bloodstream. But it kind of breaks the two neuron chain rule and I'll show you this two different ways. So I have this sympathetic preganglionic neuron and it's going to release acetylcholine just like you would expect it to. That's what it always does. And then um, this cell inside the adrenal medulla is really kind of like a neuron with no axon. So when it 
releases something, it can't release it as a neurotransmitter. It just like dumps it and it gets picked up by the bloodstream. And that is primarily epinephrine, not norepinephrine. So um, instead of being a two neuron chain, it's like one neuron and one weird looking cell that's kind of like a neuron. And that's what this figure is trying to show you. So with the adrenal medulla, the first neuron, again, releases acetylcholine. The second cell isn't really a neuron. It's actually called a chromaffin cell. And it releases epi and norepi into the bloodstream. When released as a hormone, it's more epi than norepi, but when released as a neurotransmitter, like here, it's more norepi than epi. And remember, the function of dumping epi into the bloodstream is to enhance and prolong the fight or flight um, activity because sometimes it takes you more than a couple minutes to get away from a tiger. And it's cheaper to dump it into the bloodstream than it is to repeatedly release it as a neurotransmitter. So that is the one little exception to the two neuron chain rule. Okay, and I will stop there and we'll do the rest in the next video.